Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Ledwell and this is The Inspiration Show. Today I have a special guest coming to us all the way from the UK who has a very inspiring story. Um, and it's a fantastic story of how when um, life can throw you a bit of a curveball, um, how you can choose to, uh, to look at it in a positive way and move forward and, and actually turn it around into something that's really helping the community and helping you know the world at large. So uh, can you please uh, welcome my guest, Mr. Graeme Dragon. How are you, Graeme? I'm very well, thank you, Natalie. How are you? I am absolutely fabulous today. It is quite warm here in LA today. I've had to actually flick the air conditioning on. <laughs> <laughs> it's that warm. So, uh, so anyway, let, let's uh, let's get into into the uh, show. So, let's talk first about uh, your background and your story, um, and, and and in particular, an event that happened for you not long ago that really helped you to uh, to change the course of what it is that you do. Yes, certainly. Well, back in October 2010, um, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Um, Fortunately, it was an early diagnosis, so it hadn't metastasized, as they uh, say, so it hadn't passed to other parts of the body, um, and so I had good uh, prospects of survival. Um, I was offered a number of different alternatives of treatment, one of which was to take out my prostate. Well, I'm a keen ballroom and Latin dancer, and um, there could have been problems uh, in that area if they'd taken my prostate out. So I said, no, thank you. Um, and I went for radiotherapy, uh, which did create some problems. There are some side effects from radiotherapy, but I'd certainly much rather have those than the cancer. Um, and so for seven and a half weeks, I actually went through this process of radiotherapy every day, having to go in um, and then going from that straight to work. Fortunately, a very understanding boss who let me go home early when I was tired. So that, that was the cancer. And a lot of people, I suppose, could have looked at that as a very negative experience. But it actually turned my life around because I, I thought I have to do something positive with my life, uh, particularly as I've been brought face to face with the fact that we all eventually die. Um, and so I started my own little business, but not a business just for making money, but something that would make a difference in the world. And it was marketing personal development material, which is something I've been very passionate about all my life, but had never got around to sharing. Right. So, um, Graham, this would, I'll, I'll just jump in there for a second. So, yeah. um, you you were able to go. You had the radiotherapy, and yeah. um, and it was successful. It was indeed. Excellent. Uh, okay. And uh, so you, um, I mean, uh, the work that you, you know, your day job, um, yeah. is how long have you been doing that? And can you tell us what that is? Um, yes, it's a, a bit complex. It's in financial services, and I do a whole range of things, including marketing, tax work, training financial advisors on tax, um, developing software, uh, all sorts of things and I've been in that now for about 30 years before right. that I was an English teacher okay so 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 you and um, I mean you don't have to tell me exactly what your age is but what what decade are we talking about um, I've uh, only recently turned to 61 so there ah. we go the exact age there you go <laughs> fantastic so at uh, the age of around 60 you were getting close to 60 um, you've been able to, you know, move through this, uh, you know, the the, the cancer challenge, um, yes. and now, but you've decided now at this age that you want to do something that you where you can contribute and make a difference, um, and so absolutely. So outside of something that's, you know, a, a very logical, structured kind of a, a career, you are now looking at doing something where you can help other people. So tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what gave you the idea for this. Um, and then how you got involved in into the stuff that you do online. Uh, yes, certainly. Well, it was back in the summer of 2011, 
um, so a year after I had the cancer, um, and I started uh, uh, the business called Arco. Uh, I got some training on it from a couple who are quite well known in England for this area, Paul uh, O'Mahony and Millie Ponce, and they trained us how to set up an affiliate marketing business and they gave different options, things like weight loss, uh, making money online, etc. But the one that attracted me was personal development because it fits with my philosophy. Um, I've always believed in developing myself and, and being able to pass that on to other people was something that really struck a chord. So that's what I began to develop myself. Um, it was quite slow building up. Um, 2012, early 2012, I made my first sale, which was 32 cents. Um, and gradually it, it moved on from there. Um, my first successful campaign was really the end of 2012. Uh, so for you know, a, a good example that um, you can do a lot through this kind of business, but don't believe the people who say, um, oh, you'll make a fortune in five minutes. You, it, like any other business, you have to work at it. And that's what I did. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, like even with our, our My Movie Story, like the, the Rainbows and Poppy Dogs version is that, you know, we had a great idea, we came over to the US, we did this huge big success, successful launch, but, you know, there was a lot of blood, sweat and tears that went, and a lot of risk that went into doing that, so I, I completely agree yes. with you. So let me just quickly ask you before we carry on, um, you know, so you said that, that, you know, that you have been a student of personal development. So yes. how long have you been into this material and how did it help you through your cancer situation? Well, uh, I really first got into it in my early teens. Um, and the first personal development book that I read was by Dale Carnegie and not the one that everybody knows how to win friends and influence people although I've also studied that but the one that really got to me was how to stop worrying and start living and that made a massive difference to my life I've always applied that uh, the principle that if something if you think something bad is going to happen, then first of all, accept that it might happen and then look at, okay, what do I now need to change? What do I, how do I cope with this bad situation and turn it into something good? And then when you've accepted that, then you don't accept that it's got to happen. You look for ways to avoid the bad thing happening in the first place. And in a nutshell, that's what Dale Carnegie's book is all about. And that is something I've done all my life. And I find I'm happy all the time. And even the big C um, coming at me, it couldn't knock me off my feet uh, because I could always find positives. And that's what I found building this business to share um, what I've learned uh, with, with everybody who, who wants to learn about it. Uh, so that was the, the, the beginning of my, my business, uh, Arco, um, which incidentally, um, I think I've got the, uh, the, the web address showing on the screen, but if um, uh, you can't quite read it, it's www.beallican.com. So that's easy to remember, be all I can. Now, I know that you're reaching a lot of people through your website and, and through the marketing that you're doing there, but I also know that you um, have been in contact or you've come in contact with a woman who's doing some incredible work in the world that who has inspired you to really step outside your comfort zone and do something that, that actually most human beings would never, ever attempt. So, so tell us a little bit about that meeting and the woman that, you, that you've been working with. Yes, certainly. Uh, her name is Beth Halford. Um, she's in her 20s, um, a young, uh, fully qualified physiotherapist, and she came to my local church, if you like to call that. I'm a Quaker, actually, so it was my Quaker meeting, and she gave a talk about work that she was doing as a volunteer uh, at the time in India. 
uh, working uh, with with very very poor people, um, many of them small children, babies with conditions like cerebral palsy, which meant they couldn't really move properly, and she was was helping to them to recover. Um, then she went off to Nepal, and she did the same thing, working at an orphanage in Nepal. Um, and she came back and gave a talk about that, and I was so taken with the way that she has given her life over totally to this volunteer work in very poor countries, uh, even though with her qualification she could earn a lot of money. But she's turned her back on that, she's given her life to giving back to the universe, is how I like to, to phrase it, which is what I like to try to do myself as well in my small little way. Um, so I then um, uh, became secretary of a charity that she started called the Himalayan People's Project Nepal. Uh, and the very first project was to help the children at that orphanage um, because suddenly the rug was pulled from under them. They lost the lease for the orphanage and all the children had to be sent back home. They couldn't continue to get the physiotherapy. They couldn't continue to be educated. Uh, they needed a new orphanage. Well, a local uh, Buddhist uh, temple gave them the grant to get the land, um, but they still needed to build the orphanage itself, and they needed £5,000 to build the, w the roof and the walls, which they needed to do before the monsoon season so that they could build the rest even while it was still raining. And when I heard that, I thought, right, well, I've got to do something for that. And what I chose to do was a rather odd distance, but a 70-mile cycle ride in one day. Um, I'd never ridden anywhere near that far. Um, it was 70 miles just because I thought, if I'm going to do it, I'll choose a nice route. So I chose one that went through what we call the New Forest. Lovely scenery. Um, there and back from Winchester, where I live, that was 70 miles. Um, and um, I set off at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, thought things were going fine until about 25 miles when I started getting cramps. And I thought, well, 70 miles I've got to go. I can't even think about cramps, so I just kept going. By 50 miles, the cramps were getting really severe, and uh, I had to keep stopping and pushing the bike. For the last 14 miles, I pushed the bike most of the way. Um, I only managed to cycle when it was downhill stretches because my legs were cramping too much. Um, whereas I was using different muscles when I walked and pushed the bike. So I got home about nine o'clock at night. Right. Um, but it was a wonderful feeling because I had achieved it great on a number of levels. Great to achieve something like that and to do it knowing that I wasn't in the best of health, but I still achieved it. And even greater, the fact that I raised £1,300 for that orphanage appeal in Nepal. That was, that really made it worthwhile. You know, and see, that's the thing that I love about this story, Graeme, is that, you know, most people would be like, oh, you know, maybe I donate some money or they do whatever they can. But, I mean, you really got off your butt. <laughs> yes. In every sense of the word. <laughs> Um, and went out and, and really, you know, did something to, to make a difference here. So um, I'm. Uh, so how did we go with the orphanage? Was, is, was the building, did we raise enough money for that? We raised enough money. Um, that, as I said, they, they needed £5,000. They weren't just sitting there waiting for charity. They also did things themselves to try and raise money. Um, the charity that Beth started, the Himalayan People's Project Nepal, managed to raise over £2,000. Uh, that was sent over, 
and they have achieved the full £5,000 and more. So the building is now going ahead. In total, they need £20,000 to complete the whole building. But again, um, this concept of just go for it, they haven't said, well, we better wait and see that we get the 20000 They're building. They haven't got the full 20000 yet, but they're doing it. And they know that one way or another, that money will flow in. Right. So if people wanted to make a donation, uh, where can they go to do that? Yes, they can go to www.hppnepal.com. So that's H-P-P-N-E-P-A-L, H-P-P Nepal. Wonderful. Awesome. Um, well, Graham, thank you so much for uh, for sharing your story and your experience. And I hope that um, by you doing so, that you inspire other people to to come up with creative ways to really help a cause or a charity that they really feel compelled to do so. Um, and you know, and and knowing that when you when you can really put yourself into that positive vibration and into that happy state, um, that that is really the point that you need to be in to be able to creatively come up with the right decisions regardless of what challenge you're facing in your life. So thank you so much again for joining me, Graham. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Awesome. Pleasure to have you. Now, guys, I encourage you to share this video and please get the word out about this incredible charity um, and the, the cause that we're looking to support here. Now, you can do that by clicking the Facebook and the Twitter share buttons on this page. Uh, don't forget to download the app if you haven't done so already so you can watch the shows on the go. And please leave your email in the box on this page. I would love to send you the Manifesting with the Masters video e-course. It's actually valued at $87 and I would love to send it to you for free. So until next time, remember to live large, choose courageously, and love without limits. We'll see you soon.